Hey guys, this is Candle, and welcome to another collection update. It has been quite a while. It's been, what, three months now? Uh, May, June, July, and eh, like two or three months. I'd say about two months. And I have quite a decent stack here, uh, including some other stuff. And uh, I guess we'll, we'll start off with the, the big, big thing. So I mentioned during my, my last couple Let's Plays, and uh, I think in my last... A collection update that you know my last gaming pickups video that i've been having difficulties with my computer where uh i would get in the middle of uh, a high-end gaming session specifically uh doom eternal uh civ 6 and sometimes with sims 4 uh but i would get in the middle of a high-end gaming session and my computer would just shut off like it was thermal throttling and i spent a couple months trying to tra trace down the issue trying to track it down even going so far as to uh switch out my stock intel cooler for a uh, uh corsair all-in-one water cooler for the cpu uh replacing my ram and uh then i hit a roadblock because the next couple parts to replace were going to be expensive i was down to three possible parts uh it was either going to be the motherboard the uh, graphics card or the power supply now the power supply would have been the cheapest to replace and the motherboard would have been the most expensive because since uh i mean the motherboard itself wouldn't have been too expensive but my cpu was old enough that if i was going to replace the motherboard i would have wanted to replace that as well well the first thing i did was i'd still been running the uh same uh, GTX 980 Ti that I installed in this thing when I built it five years ago and I'd already been planning on upgrading that sometime soon anyways so I went ahead and I upgraded my graphics card I got an RTX 2070 Super this box is actually a little bit heavy right now because it's got my old uh, graphics card in here uh, but yeah I ended up getting uh, upgrading to an RTX 2070 Super and I'm like really really loving it uh, I was able to finally uh, play through Doom on like ultra settings like completely maxing everything out it was great but the problem is like even after i replaced the the graphics card it wasn't quite enough i was still having the issue so then i went ahead and replaced power supply turns out that was my issue so i i spent 900 dollars uh upgrading and re uh and fixing my computer and it turns out it was only i could have spent 90 dollars and been fine uh because i would have still gotten a few more years out of uh my 980 ti but like i said i was planning on upgrading it uh sometime anyways so yeah that was the big thing i got uh over the last couple months beyond that i also finally got a uh a nintendo switch pro controller uh big big upgrade from just using the joy cons it's so much more comfortable way tons more comfortable than using the joy cons uh when you're playing on the tv or whatever so definitely glad to finally have this as well and my most recent acquisitions, keeping on the hardware front, uh, well, you can actually see I got new shelves behind me, too, so that uh, things look a little bit nicer, uh, and I have some room for expansion. I'm probably going to need to get a third one. These are, are two of the Atlantic Oscar Elites, not Elites, the Atlantic Oscar 1080s uh, that I got off of Amazon. They were about 100 bucks each, and I've made, I'm able to get like my entire physical collection minus PC games, uh, which are just off-camera right over here uh all in that and i still have room to grow and expand but i am probably going to want to get a third one at some point and i've got enough room i'd have to rearrange my living room but i've got enough room i could do four at most but beyond that i also picked up a set of hyperkin hdmi cables for retro consoles specifically i got one for ps1 and ps2 uh so i can actually run my ps2 to hd uh, this actually has support only up to 720p, which kind of sucks because the uh, the PS2 is capable of 1080i on certain games through the original component cables. But uh, still glad to have this. It it looks so much better on my TV than uh, than using composite. I also got their official branded ones for the original Xbox. Now this one actually does say it can go up to 1080i. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think my TV actually supports 1080i. I know it supports 1080p, but when I tried to enable that uh, and uh, started running, uh, I ran into some trouble testing it out. I don't actually have any uh, games that for the original Xbox that support 1080i, but even just trying uh, with it enabled, even just trying uh, uh, Star Wars KOTOR, it wouldn't show anything. As soon as I booted into that game past the menus, it wouldn't show the FMVs or anything. 
So I don't know what's going on with that, but it's it's working now. Uh, I also got the uh, one for the Dreamcast. Now, unfortunately, this one only maxes out at 480p. However, it is nice and crisp and clean for 480p. Uh, I think this is because that that's all the Dreamcast was capable of putting out. It was a max of, of 480p for that one. I don't know why it doesn't upscale to 720, but this is this is a cable that it doesn't require an outside power source like the uh, PS1, PS2, and uh, the Super Nintendo N64 and GameCube one does. Now, this does not output an image that's as clean on the GameCube as, say, the, the EOS Mark II HDMI adapter, because that actually taps into the digital uh, output signal of the GameCube, which uses a separate port, uh, separate uh, audio video port from this one. And this does, uh, it, it says supports 720p resolution, but I mean, it's, it's upscaling from at best 480p. So still, I am glad to have these. I do have to fiddle around with them a little bit more to make them work out correctly. Uh, Specifically, like, I had everything working correctly, and then I added in a new HDMI switch uh, so that I could have everything running, all my old systems running to one port with the idea that I'd eventually be able to, you know, uh, route them to my computer so I can record them. Uh, but unfortunately, the uh, Dreamcast cable is not working correctly with my HDMI switch right now. I don't know if it's because I have two HDMI switches daisy-chained together and it's just, like, too far down the chain or, or what, but... Uh, that's it for hardware and, and stuff like that. Now, it's all about the games. So, I mentioned I got the uh, Switch Pro Controller finally. And I also got a couple Switch games. I ended up picking up the Final Fantasy X X2 collection for the Switch. Uh, so, I think the only ones I'm missing now are the Vita and the... Uh, uh, Xbox One versions. Uh, beyond that, then just the collector's editions for uh, PS3 and PS4. I'm always glad to more add more Final Fantasy games to my uh, collection. And then I also picked up Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. I have not spent much time with this one as of yet. I've been busy playing a lot of other things. It's still sitting in my Switch from when I bought it. Uh, I tried playing this on the Wii and never really got too far into it. I think partially because of the lower resolution and partially because of the weird... Uh, control scheme because I never had a, a classic pro controller so I am definitely interested in giving this one a better shot uh, later on because I, I did enjoy the Xenosaga games and I know the Xenoblade games aren't quite the same but it is kind of from the same people so definitely looking forward to that uh, I also got uh, some PS4 games I ended up picking up the Trials of Mana remake which again I haven't spent too much time with this one either I really need to get into this but I've been busy with other games uh, most notably, Last of Us Part Two. I ended up playing through this. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it wasn't as good as, as I was hoping, and I don't quite understand a lot of the hate for it. Because, to me, like the, the big you know twist that they were so worried about in the beginning of uh, the game, I saw that coming a mile off. I mean, I figured that was kind of the... Th wasn't that like the whole rumor that that was going to happen, like, as soon as they showed the, the teaser trailer, wasn't that, like, the huge rumor that was going to happen? And especially since this is this is Ellie's game, it's not too surprising that that was going to happen. Uh, beyond that, I know the game got some hate from certain groups for having a, a trans character in it, and for the longest time playing through this game, I thought the trans character was someone else entirely, which, uh, I'll admit, I was not prepared for a buff girl being in this game. Abby is very buff. Uh, women do look like that in real life, but seeing her physique and knowing there was a trans character in the game, I thought Abby was the trans character right up until we actually found out who the trans character was. And you know what? I'm all right. I don't, I don't mind it. Uh, beyond that, I also picked up Ghosts of Tsushima, which just came out. Uh, I've been playing this a lot recently. I'm still working through it. I barely touched the story. I'm, I'm ex still exploring the first area. I'm really enjoying it, though. Uh, we need more more uh, Feudal Japan games, even if they don't actually come from Japan. Took me forever to find a copy of this, though. Uh, I had this on order from Amazon, but they were telling me it was going to be anywhere from uh, two weeks to a month and a half late. So I canceled my pre-order on Amazon and decided to pick it up day one at Best Buy. Uh, Best Buy didn't have any copies, so I went to GameStop. GameStop, they had a few copies, but they were either all sold out or they were spoken for uh, in in terms of uh, pre-orders. 
And so it was, it was hard to actually get this. I had to go to Walmart, believe it or not. Walmart had like half a dozen copies kind of stuck up in the corner in their case, hidden behind a sticker. So I was able to, to uh, pick up a copy pretty easily, thankfully. Uh, beyond that, it's kind of dark in here. I've, I've got like weird lighting issues sometimes. So uh, hold on one second. I rely on natural lighting in here for the most part because I don't have actual lights. <laughs> So I picked up some 360 games as well to add to my collection, uh, including uh, Call of Duty World at War. This is actually the first Call of Duty game I ever uh, played uh, way back on the uh, PC. Uh, I got it as an OEM disc with my graphics card at the time. I don't remember what it, graphics card it was. I want to say it was a GTX 560. Yeah, I think it was a 560 Ti. Uh, so this came as an OEM disc. So this was the first Call of Duty game I actually played. And now it was the last one I needed to complete my Call of Duty collection for the original, or for the uh, the Xbox 360. So I'm definitely glad to add that to my collection. And then I also picked up the Fallout 3 game add-on pack uh, discs. Uh, you have one here for uh, Broken Steel and Point Lookout, and one for The Pit and Operation Anchorage. I don't know if there's actually a third pack for that has just uh, the fifth DLC, uh, Mothership Zeta. I remember uh, playing these back in the day, and and I I would I saw the the discs at GameStop, and it was just so weird to me to see you know DLC packs on store shelves. But this was still back when you know the concept of DLC was still fairly new, and a lot of people were still used to seeing like box expansions for PC games and so on. So they ended up uh, doing uh, these as well. And I have to figure out whether or not there's a Mothership Zeta one, but I am glad to, to have these in my collection as well. And then I also picked up Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. This has a ton of Genesis games I have never actually played on here because, you know, even though I grew up with a Genesis, I only had, you know, like four games when I was really little. And then later on, I only had like a dozen at max. And uh, one of the reasons I picked this up was because I finally decided to uh, I finally decided to get into the Fantasy Star games, and I played the uh, the Fantasy Star uh, Sega Ages version on the Switch and really enjoyed it. And I found out that the uh, uh, the uh, this version has uh, all three of the Sega Genesis Fantasy Star games, two, three, and four, as well as the original one as an unlockable. So I ended up picking up this version instead of say, the, uh, the Xbox One or uh, uh, PS4 uh, uh, Sega Genesis collections. Definitely glad to add it in. Uh, I also picked up Forza Motorsport 2. I will probably never actually play this. I got this more to add to my collection than anything else. Because racing games, especially sim racing games, once they come out with the new one, there's usually not too much reason to go back and play the old ones. That said, I also picked up Forza Horizon 3 for the uh, Xbox One. And this is an open world. It's a little bit more of an arcade rather than a sim racer, but it's still got those sim aspects. I really enjoyed this. I actually just finished this. This is the one that it's set in, in Australia. And uh, the only thing I'm bummed out about is, I didn't realize this when I grabbed it, but this isn't an official Xbox case. <laughs> you can see it's not branded up here. So it's it's coloring is a little bit off. It's not too off, but it is it is a little bit. Plus the disc is on the, the right hand side in here instead of the, the left like uh, Xbox One discs are supposed to be. So I'm a little bit bummed by that because this is the only Xbox One game I have that's not in the original uh, uh, case. But I'm still glad to have it in my collection. I still need to get Forza Horizon 4 and Forza 7. Definitely looking forward to the, the new one cut that's going to be coming for the uh, Series X probably like two years or so, two, three years. Uh, I also went ahead and bit the bullet and got Dragon Quest VIII for the uh, PS2. Now, I had this years ago, but I traded it away because I never got into it. Uh, I picked this up mostly because it included the, the uh, Final Fantasy XII uh, demo, and I decided to, to try Dragon Quest because I'd heard great things about it. And it was the first Dragon Quest game I'd ever played, and I could not for the life of me get into it at the time. So I eventually uh, got rid of it, and I, I wanted it again. You know, I really want to get into Dragon Quest as well. I need to play, like, a lot of these classic uh, JRPGs, because most of them I haven't played beyond Final Fantasy. Or I never actually beat a lot of them either, like uh, uh, Lufia 1 and 2, Breath of Fire 1 and 2. I've played them, but I've never beaten them. So I, I ended up picking up uh, Dragon Quest VIII, and this was the one of the games that made me realize that I needed those cables 
uh, those HDMI cables because trying to, to run this on my uh, big 4K HD TV on uh, <laughs> it does it just didn't look good. <laughs> now I do have an older CRT. Uh, I have I have it packed away right now to save space, but I do have an older CRT I could use, but it's not like all that great. <laughs> And I'd really rather watch these or play these on the, the big screen TV. So definitely glad to have this. It's kind of interesting, though, because this is in a uh, cardboard case or a cardboard box. And I finally figured out the reason why they did this uh, is because in in the uh, actual case, you have the, the two discs. You know, you've got the the, PS, uh, the Final Fantasy 12 demo disc and then the actual disc for uh, Dragon Quest VIII. And then you also have two manuals, one for Dragon Quest VIII and one for the Final Fantasy XII demo. Well, since you have the, the fold over here for the second disc, if you try to put both manuals in there, you can't actually close the case here. So what they did was they put one manual in the plastic case, put the plastic case in the box, and put the other manual in the box as well. So then it all fits. So I'm definitely glad to, to have this back in my collection. And... I really need to expand uh, my PS2 collection. I'm missing a lot of classic uh, RPGs, especially like uh, Grandia 2 and 3. I think 2 was on the, the PS2. Uh, I know 1 was on the PS1. Uh, also, uh, the Suikoden games, uh, 3, 4, 5, Tactics, uh, Zone of the Enders. I have the HD collection, but I don't have the originals. And of course, the Dot .hack games, there's seven of those, one of which is incredibly hard to find and... Uh, uh, extremely expensive because of that but uh, also moving on from that uh, I kind of went a little bit overboard in the last couple months and slowed down a bit on uh, big box PC games I think I mentioned last time how I've been trying to expand my big box PC game collection but I went overboard and got four games in in like three weeks two three weeks and so I didn't actually get any of the last couple months so I ended up, uh, what I did pick up was the original StarCraft with the, the gate fold and everything. And uh, it's, it's in pretty good shape all over for the most part. Uh, there was a Walmart sticker I had to, to peel off here. And uh, beyond that, you know, it's got a little bit of, of, of crushing on the, the side here. And uh, the only other damage to it uh, that I hadn't noticed, I didn't notice this when I ordered it, is... There's uh, some damage on the, the top fold and the back here from when somebody tried to peel off the actual tape here rather than just cutting it. I don't know why they decided to do that because that kind of tape, I mean, that's going to damage the box when you try to take it off. But uh, other than that, the only interesting thing to note is that the game is rated T, but the actual... Uh, <laughs> it's, it's funny because I don't know what happened. You saw the box was rated T. The actual uh, jewel case for the disc, it says rated M. So I don't know why that is different, but it's it's really weird and interesting, I think. Uh, beyond that, there's also ads in here for Ro uh, Warcraft Adventures, which got canceled like ultra hard way back in the day. Uh, beyond that, I also got the Crystal Key, which is another classic uh, PC game. It's a point-and-click adventure, kind of in the same vein as Myst. And it's from the same publishers as the uh, Beyond Atlantis games. And I had been wanting to play this game for years and years. For like 20 years I'd wanted to play this game. <clears throat> excuse me. I remember seeing it in the stores uh, when I was a kid. And I, I was excuse me, really intrigued by it and wanted to play it. And guys, I have never been more disappointed by a game I've waited this long to play in my life. Now, there is a sequel to this game. So I will eventually get that and probably play through it. But this... Guys, don't just just avoid it if you if you don't have any nostalgia for it like I do. Just just avoid these games. Uh, beyond that, I also picked up Atlantis: The Lost Tales, and this is actually the first game at the Atlantis series. The second one being Beyond Atlantis, which I did a let's play of years ago. And uh, what's kind of interesting is I was under the impression that this never got a, a release originally in North America. Because uh, the first I'd heard of it was seeing it uh, available digitally on uh, GOG. And so I, I never knew that this got an initial release in North America. Because the Atlantis 2 in North America is Beyond Atlantis. And then Atlantis 3 in North America is Beyond Atlantis 2. Well, it turns out I was wrong. And 
Atlantis The Lost Tales did get a release in North America. And uh, how do I know this? Well, because it's got a rating from the ESRB here. K to A, Kids to Adults, what eventually became E for Everyone later on. Uh, actually, probably just a couple years later. And beyond that, I finally picked up a box copy of the original Mist. I don't know why I waited so damn long for this, because Mist is like my all-time favorite point-and-click adventure series, and I remember playing Mist Classic long, long ago. I'd had it in, uh, I first played it at my cousin's house in Chicago when I was like 11, and then uh, later on I got a, uh, a triple game pack for Christmas that was, it was called a three-in-one family fun uh, pack, and it had you know, Mist, it had Gold Mahjong, and it had Maurice Ashley teaches te uh, chess. And I remember years ago, I eventually did pick up, you know, the other games in the series uh, physically, but I never got around to getting the original Mist until now. <laughs> so I'm definitely glad to have this in my collection. Uh, I don't have the complete Mist collection uh, properly yet, because not only are there multiple uh, releases uh, of, like, Mist and Riven together and Mist, Riven, and Exile together... Uh, but there's also uh, big box editions of Mist Masterpiece Edition, Real Mist. Uh, believe it or not, there's also big box editions of Mist 4 and 5. Uh, and I believe big box copies of uh, Uru Ages Beyond Mist as well as Uru's two expansions. So anyways, that is it for this collection update, this gaming pickups video. So I shall see you guys next time with uh, hopefully more stuff. Uh, I had to slow down some of my spending recently, so... Uh, because I again I needed other things like say the shelves here and I've got other stuff I got to get to so I have to slow down my spending a little bit so maybe a couple months before the next one but until then I'll see you guys next time thanks for watching